All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Antonio Butts uh, from Walnut Way Conservation Corporation. I'm joined today by Nick Hyla and Nick Mathis from Midwest Renewable Energy Association. And we're working in partnership together to offer introductory solar installation training program opportunities, learning opportunities. Uh, the program, you have an opportunity to gain solar credential. It's a pathway to attaining those credentials, but there are some introductory steps and introductory learning. Um, and this, um, this program is, um, is really exciting for us because we get the opportunity to create more awareness around solar careers and the, the renewable energy space here in the neighborhood in partnership with MREA and um, exposing folks to these career pathways. And so we're very excited about this partnership and we're looking forward to building a pipeline of interest so that we can have a, a robust calendar year next year of solar training sessions. Um, there, we have a lot of um, uh, surprises along the way, like initiatives and, and events that we're planning to build some energy and momentum about around the partnership that we're doing together. So again, um, we're really excited about this opportunity and we're glad that you all could be here with us today to learn more about it. <clears throat> so again, our goal is to increase exposure in the pathways and uh, to careers in solar. And so for our session today, uh, our presenters again will be Nick Hyla and Nick Mathis. And um, just as far as housekeeping, before they get started, um, you can put your questions in the Q&A section or use the chat section to, um, to uh, post your questions. And then throughout the uh, session, we'll also have some poll or survey questions that'll help us get to know the audience a little better <clears throat> and uh, be more sp specific and targeted in our presentation today. Um, so. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you all Mr. Nick Hyla. Well, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for spending an hour or so with us uh, to learn about solar and careers in solar. Uh, thanks, Antonio, again for hosting us. I'm Nick. There's the other Nick. Uh, I'm the Nick that doesn't know how to install a solar electric system. So any real technical questions you should give to Nick Mathis. He's a master electrician, certified PV installer. Uh, I'm the director of the MREA. So uh, I head up our programs and I follow workforce uh, issues and, uh, and I generally keep all of the wheels greased here so we can do great things like uh, we're doing tonight. So uh, let's talk about um, the opportunities in, for solar careers in Wisconsin. Um, so I'll first talk, I guess, a, a bit about the MREA. Um, and uh, Antonio, if you could go to the first slide. I'm trying to remember what I put there. <laughs> oh, here's a poll first. Or do you want to do a poll? Yeah, let's hear from you all first uh, before I get started. So what brought you to this webinar? Uh, interested in the career change, looking for a job, you have a family, friend, client that may benefit from this, uh, you want to work in a job that helps the environment, or something else that you can put in the chat. How are we doing? Are people voting, Antonio? Oh, I'm sorry, I was I was muted. Yes, folks are definitely voting. I'm about to end the poll now. Um, looks like a lot of interest in folks who want to help the environment. So let me share the results. <clears throat> job that helps the environment. All right. 
Um, well, good. Uh, solar is a fast growing uh, career field and it does help the environment. So uh, let's, um, next slide. So we're gonna talk about the solar job opportunity. As I said, my name is Nick Hyla. I'm the director of the MREA. Uh, the MREA is a nonprofit organization. We've been in Wisconsin uh, since 1990. We were formed uh, as a response to the first Gulf War. A uh, group of people uh, decided that it was time for a domestic energy revolution and started organizing education. Uh, activities to help people uh, reduce their energy use and produce domestic energy uh, to end our endless uh, wars for oil and started the first energy fair and launched our training programs, which have been going for 30 years. We now train about a thousand people a year to design, install, operate, and maintain uh, solar electric systems. And uh, Nick Mathis, who we heard from later, is one of our primary instructors for that. Um, next slide. And uh, uh, member-based organization. So we have uh, about 2,500 members. Uh, we also do uh, solar group buy programs, which we'll be doing in Milwaukee uh, this coming year again, and uh, hope to get some uh, solar job internships uh, placed as part of that effort. So hopefully we can work with you all to do that. We also manage a program that donates uh, solar to Wisconsin schools and a public education effort uh, to help focus on uh, renewable, uh, local, clean energy job growth in response to the COVID-19 uh, recession. So, solar jobs, an overview. First, uh, every state is different. In the United States, we have a 50-state experiment when it comes to energy markets because state regulators and state legislators have a significant amount of control over how energy markets develop. So as a result, uh, job opportunities are different in every state. Uh, in the Midwest, in our collections of, this, uh, of uh, states, we often called the industrial Midwest, uh, we are one of the fastest growing solar markets uh, in the United States. Uh, we were a bit of a laggard as the coasts, uh, specifically California, uh, launched the solar revolution, uh, but now uh, policies throughout the region are really causing a very uh, steady and uh, quick uptick in solar jobs. Solar installer is the industry's largest and fastest growing job. Uh, it's also a dangerous uh, job because it involves electricity and often being on roofs uh, and construction. And so it is one that um, is very rewarding, but also uh, can be challenging. Uh, but uh, I haven't met a solar installer uh, in my over my last 12 years at MREA that didn't actually absolutely love their job. Solar businesses want trained workers because it saves money. So training is real key uh, to getting a job. Trained workers are more efficient. Uh, and they reduce costs. And so the industry is always looking for people that have experience in training. Three quarters of the industry are male and three quarters are white. Uh, that is changing, um, but it still is a male dominated industry that, you know, the solar power industry evolved from the power electronics industry, which is very male dominated and very white. And if you want a solar job, get solar training and get experience that you can. Uh, experience is the currency of uh, the electricity world. Uh, if you have good experience, worksite experience, tool management, uh, electrical competent competencies, roof competencies, um, all of these things matter to employers because they know that you'll be able to plug into their team right away. Next slide. So we're gonna go through a series of uh, kind of data points and statistics uh, employment in the Midwest and uh, focus a bit on Wisconsin and the Milwaukee area as well. Okay, so in Wisconsin, um, there uh, is a significant amount of uh, clean energy jobs. Uh, jobs grew one and a half times faster. Uh, clean energy jobs grew one and a half times faster than the regular industry in Wisconsin uh, over the last year. And uh, Jobs continue to grow, um, you know, at a, I would say a, have been a slow pace in Wisconsin, but those uh, jobs are picking up pretty dramatically here uh, and are expected to pick up in the next coming years. What you'll see is when you look at the employment picture in Wisconsin, 
uh, you'll see the counties that are darkest have the most jobs. So you'll notice the counties around the Milwaukee area are really quite uh, uh, packed with energy jobs, which includes uh, energy efficiency uh, so, and solar energy jobs. Next slide. So if you look at the full clean energy employment in picture in Wisconsin, uh, you'll notice that uh, about 64,000 of the clean energy jobs in Wisconsin are in efficiency. Those are in companies that uh, do efficiency assessments. Uh, Johnson Controls, for example, is a big, they do efficiency plans and large scale uh, energy audits and energy efficiency installations for large businesses. They're also in home efficiency. So home energy audits, uh, window replacement, insulation, uh, air sealing. Uh, you'll also see the next highest uh, employment category is renewable energy. Most of those jobs are actually solar energy and then advanced transportation, grid storage and clean fuels. But the bulk of jobs are energy efficiency and solar energy. In the United States, uh, you'll see that we kind of peaked in the nationwide solar growth in 2016 and are kind of like climbing back up to that peak. Um, that peak was because a lot of solar energy adoption is driven by a 30% federal tax credit. Now what that means is if you owe money in taxes at the end of the year, say uh, you owe $3,000 in taxes to the federal government, you're doing your taxes, and you in that year bought a solar energy system for your house for $10,000. Now you get a 30% tax credit, that's $3,000. Since you owe 3,000, now you take the 3,000 off, you owe zero. And that's been driving a lot of the solar adoption for, uh, for homes and businesses that owe taxes. So it's a way to basically avoid paying taxes. That tax credit was supposed to go away in 2017. That's why in 2016, you see a big jobs picture because everybody was building solar because they were afraid the tax credit was going to go away. It didn't go away. It was extended. And so then you see kind of a, the greater uptick in, uh, in energy jobs. 2020 will be uh, surpassed 2016 levels for employment when we get those, those numbers. So jobs by sector. Uh, so why is this important? You know, if you're kind of looking for a change of job or looking for a new want to do is say who's hiring and what are they hiring for? Well, if you look at the solar industry, uh, the vast majority of jobs in the industry are in installation and project development. So actually advancing projects, so designing projects and installing them and operating them and maintaining them on people's houses. Uh, and so you can also see there's some in manufacturing, in wholesale trade and distribution, in large facility O&M, operation and maintenance, but the vast majority of jobs are installation and project development jobs. Um, if you look at the employment over time by sector, what you'll see is that the growth in jobs has really been in installation and project development. So what does that mean? It means that US manufacturing has not grown, even though we're, we're installing 10 times more solar uh, per year than just uh, five years ago, we're not manufacturing more modules in the United States. Um, we're also uh, really just everything else has been pretty uniform, it's really in the project development. So that includes design, uh, sales, and installation work. And this uh, chart may be hard for you to see. Hopefully Antonio uh, will send this presentation out to you all afterwards. Uh, but this is really a detailed breakdown of the uh, employment by demographics in, the, in each sector. So I think the most important one to see is if you compare the bottom line, which is US workforce overall, which is uh, compared to the one above it, which is solar overall, you'll see that in the US workforce overall, nearly 50% of people in the workforce are women, which makes sense, right? But if you look at solar overall, it's just a quarter, 20, 26%. Um, you'll also notice a pretty much parity in the uh, Latino uh, uh, participation in the workforce. 
Um, you'll also see black or African-American, uh, solar is less than the national average. So work to do there, uh, lots of opportunity there. Um, and you'll see uh, solar overall is actually uh, amazingly uh, less white uh, than the, the greater workforce. Um, solar does employ more veterans um, than most industries, but actually really uh, employs, a vast majority of its employees are younger than the US workforce. A lot of that has to do with the hands-on nature uh, and the physical nature of the, of the jobs in solar. Next slide. So what can you expect to make uh, in an entry-level position in solar? Most entry-level kind of labor positions are, you know, 16 to 20 dollars an hour. Mid-level uh, wage, which is, you know, then you're uh, not quite approaching project management or senior crew lead, but you have some established responsibilities, you're dependable, maybe have a few people working for you, 23 to 28 dollars, and then senior crew lead, 30 to 3750. Um, you know, in manufacturing, uh, what I would say is that you're not going to see a lot of manufacturing jobs in the solar industry. Uh, so really the top table really matters. So you're looking at a range from $16 an hour to just starting to upwards of the high 30s after you've established yourself. Uh, here's some important uh, uh, data related to uh, employment from employers. So this, this is a survey, nation, nationwide survey of solar business owners. Uh, and uh, the survey was asking how difficult is it you, for you to find employees with these skill sets? So what you'll see is overall, between somewhat dis difficult and very difficult, if, if you look at that, that's over 80% of solar businesses in the United States have a difficult time hiring people. What does that mean? That means there's a lot of opportunity out there for you uh, to get a job because people, they can't find people. Uh, so if you look at uh, particularly installation and project development, which I think is more important in this area and in this time, which is at the bottom, you'll also see that 86% of employers have a difficult time finding people and one in three employers. So one of every three companies out there say it's very difficult. So that is a real opportunity uh, for job seekers in the industry. Significant reason for the reported difficulty in hiring. Lack of experience, training, or technical knowledge. First thing, lack of experience, training, or technical knowledge. That's what we're here to talk about today is the opportunity for training and uh, certification and experience in solar energy uh, because 50% of employers find it really difficult to find employees because of that very reason. Um, some, in addition, you know, if you look at the second highest reported uh, challenge, it's, uh, you know, small applicant pool. So another positive for solar job seekers. Uh, next slide. Most difficult positions to fill. So we already know that the solar job market is growing. We know that uh, project development and installation is uh, the biggest part of the market. We know that employers have a difficult time finding people, more than 80% of employers, and that the most, uh, their biggest challenge is finding people with knowledge and experience. Uh, so what's the most difficult position for them to fill? It's actually sales, marketing, and customer service. So if I've given you the impression that the only option for you out there is to climb on roofs and work with dangerous electricity, uh, let me correct that assumption right now and say that positions that are often most difficult for fill, to fulfill are sales positions. And the particular challenge in solar with a sales position is that it mixes customer service with technical knowledge. You have to have a technical understanding of the, of the system, as well as understand how to talk to customers and how to ensure that customers are appropriate for solar energy. Uh, but then again, management, um, electricians, construction workers, and instant rate very high as far as the most difficult uh, positions to fill. Next slide, please. So, I had mentioned before 
that the reason that employers want experienced and knowledgeable people is to save on project costs. Solar energy is a low margin business. And by that, what I mean is if you think about somebody who's gonna purchase a solar energy system, what they're basically doing is buying 30 years of electricity upfront. Now, if you're gonna make an investment, if you're someone that has money to invest, then that's likely a very good investment. You can hedge against future electricity uh, price increases. You know, Solar doesn't have any moving parts, so you install it, it's very low maintenance and uh, you can save money over the lifetime of the system, but you have, to, you have to install it all up front. So the lower the cost, the more compelling to the home or the business, uh, the solar system. And so a solar installer is always looking to reduce costs. What you'll see here is if you think about a solar electric system, right? You have the nice shiny modules on the roof. You have them tied to a rack. You have all the wiring that wires all the modules together. You have the wiring going down to the balance of system, which includes the inverters and all the other electrical components. All of that hardware is actually only 36% of the cost, just a little over one third of the cost. The rest is all human, it's all soft costs. And of those soft costs, of that 64%, uh, the, one of the largest costs is installation labor. And so businesses are interested in workers that have the knowledge and the proficiency to decrease the time per installation and reduce the cost to generate more sales. Next slide. So in uh, solar, uh, there are a number of career pathways. We are, our program is aligned with uh, North America's leading solar certification program for individuals in the industry. It's called NABCEP, the North American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners, NABCEP. And NABCEP has an associate pathway, which the training that we're offering in partnership with Walnut Way uh, will satisfy all the requirements for that pathway and end with the exam to get a NABCEP associate credential. That is the entry level credential in industry and our courses are mapped out here in that orange uh, graph uh, diagram on the right side of your screen. Now the wheel on the left side of the screen then is all of the different pathways that you would be able to pursue for certification. So we're offering a credential that's entry level that you put on your resume and you say, hey, I have the basic knowledge uh, and skills uh, as tested by the MREA to earn my NAMSEP associate and I would like a job. Once you get a job, then you can decide what career pathway you'd like to pursue. So you can see PV uh, installer, specialist certification, PV design specialist, PV installation professional. So NAPSEP offers all these other certifications uh, once you're in the industry. Some of them are more engineering intensive, uh, intensive, which require design. Some are more sales intensive, which require a lot of office work and customer engagement. Some are more installation intensive and some operation and maintenance to keep systems running and to make sure that they're running smoothly. So there are a lot of different pathways uh, for work in the in the solar industry. Uh, next slide, please. So this is from our uh, last year's annual report. We actually are just coming out with our new annual report here that has some updated numbers, but you can see in 2019, over a thousand students uh, took courses through us. Over a hundred of them uh, passed the associate exam. Uh, we have a very high pass rate, so it's not all those thousand students took the exam. Uh, but we have a, a over 90% pass, pass rate on the exam. So over 100 students got that associate credential through us uh, through a mix of online and uh, in-person training, just like we'll be offering uh, with Walnut Way. Uh, we also have a new partnership uh, in Wisconsin. It's called the Solar Core, and we're expanding it to the Midwest. It includes four uh, technical college partners, uh, eight contractors, um, and uh, we're really looking to uh, put people into internships on high visibility, high impact projects. So we're hoping to advance a few projects in the Milwaukee area and have internship opportunities for people that have taken our training or taken training through our partnering colleges. Next slide. 
so we've worked with quite a few organizations throughout the Midwest. Uh, we've worked in Puerto Rico to uh, design and install solar plus storage uh, installations there to help them weather power outages after hurricanes. We've worked in with a number of groups in Illinois um, and also right now currently working with the NAACP uh, Power Up Initiative in Evansville, Indiana, with Walnut Way here in Wisconsin, with Renewable Energy Partners, which is uh, a training and project development organization that su uh, supports Black-owned businesses in North Minneapolis, working in the solar and clean energy industry. So in Michigan with Solar Darity, who's working in a part of Detroit to uh, train um, energy efficiency and solar uh, energy uh, professionals new to the industry. So. Let's review just the same slide we started with. So solar job opportunities in review. Different in each state, in Wisconsin, employers are hiring, the market is growing. The industry is one of the fastest growing industries in the Midwest with many more opportunities arising. It's a great time to get involved in solar because we have a low solar penetration right now less than 1% of all the electricity in Wisconsin is solar energy. And there are tons of opportunities for homes, businesses, municipalities, universities, schools, hospitals, utilities to install solar. We have uh, many, many, many megawatts of solar going in that are utility owned and they are desperate for workers. So it's in, in solar. Solar industry uh, is, uh, and solar installer is the industry's largest and fastest growing job. Uh, businesses rate solar sales jobs as the most difficult to find good employees. Solar businesses want trained workers because it saves money. Three quarters of the industry is male and three quarters is white. And if you want a solar job, you get training and get any related experience that you can because construction experience, site experience, electrical and experience, all are transferable and uh, the industry needs, uh, needs people with experience. And that's my presentation and I'm sticking to it. Thanks, Nick. That's the really comprehensive overview. And now we're gonna get into the technical aspects of it. And, and during last session, we actually towards the end started to get into some question and answer portions of this. And so we're gonna turn it over to Mr. Nick Mathis so he can introduce himself and get his first poll question going. It's all yours, Nick. Great, thanks, Antonio. Yeah, thanks for having me here today. I'm happy to be here with you all. I'll do a quick introduction of myself and then I'm gonna talk a bit about the training programs that we, that we do and what we're specifically looking at doing here with Walnut Way. Um, so yeah, my name is Nick Mathis. I've taught for the MREA in a part-time capacity for over 10 years. And for the last two years, I've joined the team uh, full-time as a project manager and I work in our training programs here also. Um, so I'm a Wisconsin master electrician. I've been working with Solar Electric for over 13 years. Um, I now live in Amherst, Wisconsin, but I spent over a decade living in Milwaukee. Uh, I still make it back regularly to visit my niece. Uh, real familiar with Walnut Way. I think it's a great organization and mission. I look forward to working together. Uh, Nikhila brought up many important points in the previous slides. <clears throat> and one of the important points is that currently the industry is 75% white and male. Um, I mean, you know, that's pretty lopsided. There's a lot of uh, inclusiveness that needs to happen, and we aim to help get more people the opportunity to be involved and thrive in the industry because it is a great industry and it's a great, rewarding career. It's great to get uh, as many people that opportunity to be involved as, as we can. Uh, yeah, the one other point I wanted to talk to that Nick mentioned is that it's not necessarily the easiest or the least dangerous job out there, but, you know, I think it's one of the most rewarding. Um, I started doing solar over 13 years ago. I got my hands on it um, on one project and I was just hooked. And so um, it's become a passion and a life uh, mission of mine is to make electricity from solar and uh, help our environment in the meantime. I mean, that's the reason I do it. Um, Okay, so here we had a poll that's put up while I was yapping. Um, what type of job do you think would best suit you for, from all, for all the participants here? Uh, good, looks like we got a good bit of people as office job, design, sales, customer service, administrative work. That's great. As we saw from Nick's uh, presentation, there's definitely the um, demand for that. 
um, installation job was on there, and that's good too because I think those would probably be the two biggest categories um, for solar uh, solar careers. And uh, you'll see as we go through the course, um, or go as we go through the different levels of the course that we're going to be pre uh, offering through Walnut Way, is that uh, our training hits both of those aspects quite well. So uh, once you are finished with the course and you choose to take the NABCEP PV Associate exam, you should have, you'll have a good background in uh, installation and uh, design and sales. <clears throat> and then uh, if you remember that wheel that Nick showed you from NABCEP, then there's all those different paths you could take to uh, further uh, deep delve into the industry if you so choose. Okay, another question here. Um, do you feel like you have the skills and experiences that would help you succeed in a solar job? Yes, no, maybe. Kind of early on to throw that question. I, there might be, a, instead of a maybe, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> Depends what we're talking about here, Nick. But we'll see what people have. <clears throat> All right, so that's great. We got 63% um, saying yes and 38% saying maybe. I think that's that's awesome. I'm really happy that nobody said no on there because there's a lot of um, you know there's a lot of room for everybody everybody's backgrounds here. Okay, so what we have here is the um, or so what we do is our entry level into the industry is called the Solar Training Academy. Traditionally, it was offered in person as six days spread over three weekends. So what we would traditionally do is one weekend a month for three months. And you can see here's our classroom at Esquila Verde just on the south side. Uh, I think that's a 20, uh, 35th Street Bridge in the background there. So we're just on the south side, just uh, south of the Menominee Valley. So this is <clears throat> Uh, so we do two weekend trainings at this location. I mean, uh, two, two, <laughs> two days for a weekend and do that three times a month or th uh, three months in, in a year. And then after that, we've got the, we've gone through the curriculum and people are good to set for the exam and go out and get what jobs they want. Um, now with the COVID situation, we've merged this with our online format. So we've got one to two hours of live review sessions for roughly every four hours of independent study. So we'll let you uh, work at your own pace online. And then, um, you know, after I think we have the review session set up for every week or so. Um, so you got about four, <clears throat> you get to do about four hours and then we'll spend one hour, one or two hours together online live and answering any questions that might be there, hitting some of the high points and filling in any of the um, holes that might be left in the curriculum. Uh, yeah, so like an example that uh, students can work on chapters one through five at their own pace, and then we'll do a one hour live Zoom session. And then after that, the students can work on chapters six through 10, and then we'll finish the class with a one to two hour Zoom session. So uh, it's, it should provide a lot of flexibility and it's kind of nice because people will be able to work on it when they have time. Uh, you know, instead of taking up a whole weekend once a month to uh, do your uh, classes, now you can pick away at it, do an hour a night or a couple hours on the weekend, however you choose to do. So uh, we're piloting this out with our uh, COVID, <laughs> our COVID routine we've got a couple different solar train academies that are launching this year. So I think it'll work out real good. <clears throat> and so, um, so we've got the, the way the classes will lay out is the class number one will be basic PV or photovoltaics. Uh, that stands for photo is sun or solar, voltaic is electric. So basic PV, basic solar electric. Uh, that's an eight hour course. And it's an introduction and overview of the basics of the PV systems, how they work, different technologies, the way uh, the systems are configured, what all the different components are that go in a system, do an introduction to electrical concepts and electrical calculations. And I should add in here, I think since we did our last presentation, we've um, added in a class before this as an option, um, which will be in, uh, working with electricity. I believe is what it's called. And so that's gonna be a four, roughly four hour 
overview or introduction to working with electricity and different electrical calculations. Because um, the solar is electrical at its base, and so it's nice to get a little, uh, you know, background electrical math. Okay, class two is PV site assessment, another eight hour class. And that's essentially how to assess any given site for a solar installation. Here we look at uh, using some pretty cool tools to take uh, shade readings. We'll estimate electricity production. We'll analyze electricity consumption. You know, we'll, we're gonna be producing electricity, but we also wanna understand where's our electricity going? And, you know, can we uh, conserve some electricity instead of producing that much more? Uh, do financial analysis of the systems, and then we'll do start on sizing systems. So you start to um, get a good understanding of how how to um, appropriately size an electric a solar electric system. Okay, and then the class after that is PV system design. That's going to be sixteen hours, and that's the step by step process of designing a PV system. So that's pretty great. Now we're gonna go through, look at all the components in detail, specify equipment. Uh, we're gonna go through system sizing strategies, um, starting from just a uh, bare roof and then figuring out how to design an, a system that's appropriate to put on that roof. And so that's gonna be phys <coughs> physical design, electrical design. I'm sorry, one second. Apologize there, that was my cheerleader. Um, very excited about system design. And then uh, and go through solar installation considerations. <clears throat> okay, and then this will culminate in uh, class four, our PV lab and design scenarios. So this will be the one course that we don't do online. We're gonna do this in person so we can all work together and get our hands on uh, do, with the construction of two PV systems. So here you can see, this is our lab. I believe this was one we did up in Minnesota, but it's the same equipment. So you could see that cart there that everybody's standing around. We've got uh, all the equipment for a grid tied solar electric system on there. And then on the other side of that, we've got all the equipment for a standalone or just battery based uh, PV system. So we're gonna be able to wire both of those and you get familiar with the components of those two systems. And then you can see there's that array, um, the solar module sitting on the ground there. So we're actually gonna wire this up um, uh, hook it up to the electric grid and uh, start producing some power. So it's a great, it's a great class. Um, so yeah, so we do construction of two labs, uh, go through reading specifications and line diagrams, uh, talk about using electrical multimeters. Uh, we'll do testing and troubleshooting and of course safety. We always want to keep, um, make sure we're drilling in uh, good safety practices. And so that works into be a really good um, interactive class. And then to prepare you for the NABCEP <clears throat> PV associate exam, where you got a six hour um, exam prep class. And so this is, again, this is a six hour um, in-person class. And so uh, things can, it, it can take varying amount of time when you are doing it online, um, self-paced. It can take a little longer, a little shorter, but something like that. And so what we'll do is we'll go through uh, a practice exam actually with 50 questions. That's gonna be real representative of what you can expect to see on the NABCEP exam. And so that's, um, that's really nice because it gives us a good idea of what type of content, how the questions are gonna be structured on the NABCEP exam, and then gives us any ideas um, on things that we might wanna review further. Um, it's pretty great because at the end of this exam, I mean, uh, this PV exam prep class, we'll always uh, go back and do some Q&A and then dig deeper into the curriculum in any spots where people might have some questions that need a, a little more uh, attention. And so then with this class, we also talk about test taking methodologies as uh, something I learned when I was studying for the NABCEP exam uh, through the MREA. Uh, some really cool, just, um, little tips and tricks that help you take an exam efficiently and uh, really can help you shave down your time. 
identifying resources and study materials for the exam. We'll talk about the different learning objectives that you'll need to cover for the exam. And so we'll, at the end of that, I say, we'll do a group review of the entire practice exam in a live review session. And we'll follow that up with questions and answers on, or uh, questions and further review if people would like. Yep, so here's another poll. Uh, how's everybody out there uh, feeling about interest in pursuing a career in the solar field? <clears throat> yeah, the plan is after, at the end of this course, um, you should feel pretty confident and excited about going out and pursuing a job in the solar field. And, you know, it's, um, it's pretty great. It's, it's, as you saw from one of the earlier graphs, uh, the solar job industry has been growing and growing and it's not slowing down anytime. Might even be getting some more, um, friendly federal policy here coming up soon too. So that's pretty exciting. All right, so we got a solid 67% uh, saying yes, they'd be interested in pursuing a career in the solar industry. That's great news. And uh, another two saying maybe, that's just that's just awesome. Um, and again, no no's. So that's, uh, that's much appreciated. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, we've got time for questions and answers uh, for myself, Antonio, or Nikaila. Um, if anybody has any further questions out there, it looks like Greta had answered a couple, or at least one or so questions that were answered in there. And again, in the chat bar, it looks like there's that link to the um, the uh, PBS video about renewables that was just, uh, I think it debuted today. So that's a good watch. I haven't been able to watch it yet, but tonight I will. All right, then we're looking at another poll here. How old is everybody out in the crowd? We'll keep. All right, so we got a good spread, 18 to 24, 25 to 34, and 35 to 44. Well, that's great, Get, can gear up for a long career in the solar industry. It's, um, yeah, I think it's, it's a good, sustainable, rewarding place to make a living. <clears throat> okay, and then location. Milwaukee, greater Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Midwest, US or outside of US. All right, so we're, we got two respondents saying Wisconsin and two from outside the US. All right, well, hopefully we can fold you into the program or get, in, get you into some local jobs at the end of the program. Then we got another poll for what kind of job skills and experience do you have? Okay, and here we got one question for uh, when does class one begin? And I'll leave that up to maybe uh, Antonio or Greta to answer. Thanks, Nick. Greta, if you're with us, I'll defer to you. Yes, sorry, I was trying to unmute here. It looks like we have it scheduled for the beginning of January. We have an info session scheduled for the 7th. And then the first day of the PV 104 working with electricity would be January 12th. All right, great. It looks like we got a variety of skill sets from our attendees. So that's great. Another poll, what do you value most in a workplace?
teamwork and good communication. All right. <laughs> the ability to grow within. A couple more poll questions. Okay. So for have you taken an online course before, it's a bit split. There's some opportunity there too. Yeah, absolutely. I think this will be a good format, low pressure. Get plenty of time to work on things. This is a pretty important question. Will you be comfortable attending an in-person lab day with strict enforcement of COVID-19 safety measures, mass distancing, hand and tool sanitizer? Yeah, that's a great question in there. And that was something I meant to bring up in my presentation when, we, when I was mentioning our lab day. Um, so we had to postpone a lot of our labs this, uh, this year, 2020, because of COVID. And so we ended up, um, uh, you know, we, we executed our Milwaukee lab day. Oh man, I think that was the second week in March, second weekend in March, right around there, right before the lockdown hit. And so we were doing social distancing and masks, but then some of the other, um, there was actually one scheduled in Illinois that next weekend and that got um, canceled because of COVID. And so we had to postpone those all the way until I think it was August or September. And so then we uh, piloted our first um, COVID compliant labs and that went really well. We had about 10 attendees, I think, and we were able to do real good. Everyone did social distancing, mask wearing, uh, hand sanitizing. And we, you know, when we're using tools, we had people sanitize uh, the sanitizing tools in between uses, uh, people wearing gloves, and all the attendees and the instructors uh, said that they were very comfortable with that setup. So that was good. And it looks like there's a fair amount of people here that are comfortable with that also, as long as we keep adhering to uh, safe practices. I'll be here teaching and uh, working with you all too, and I've got um, great interest in making sure I stay safe. So. I don't be tracking, I'm not tracking anything back to my um, people I care about either. So it's all a good circle. We'll keep watch out for each other here. Oh, this is great. Yeah, so people are feeling good about it, excited and thrilled. That's, that's, that's exciting. Yeah, I think there's, this will be a lot of fun. We'll get some good work done. You gotta be kidding me. Nobody's hungry. I'm hungry. It wouldn't let me <laughs> click on it. <laughs> nice, nice. I think I have one more. And uh, just another quick general question. <clears throat> How much do you know about solar, the solar industry? Hundred percent of the people who responded said a little bit. That's good. So again, you know, in this partnership, our goal is to is to to develop this pipeline and to give people all of the support and 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 guidance they need in order to to you know successfully. Um, take on this career pathway. And we want to be able to help folks on this journey, however far they would like to go. For those of you who would like to, you know, earn a full certification and credentialing, we want to be there with you and, and help guide you and support you in that process. For those of you who are, are just love to learn and are learners or looking for introductory opportunities or, or see this as an opportunity to, to 
basically, you know, um, find out where your interest lies or the things that you're interested in. We want to be able to support you in that journey too. In general, I think what came or what continues to come out of the presentation is that uh, the renewable energy space, the conservation space is, is the direction that we know that we're headed. And there's a tremendous amount of opportunity just in terms of uh, career pathways, overall economic opportunity, and then, you know, just the overall well-being of our, of our individual selves, households, families, the country and the world itself. And so we see this as a huge win-win or win-learn opportunity that we want to be able to nurture and, and maintain. And, and we're in this for the long haul. So we see this as, as something that'll be a part of who we are as an organization for years to come. And so we're thinking about this growth in a very organic way. And we're really intentional about nurturing each step and each individual we get to work with while we also build our own capacity in this space. So this is a really big opportunity for us. And I just wanted to just reaffirm that this is, this is not short-sighted for us. We're really thinking about this as this year we're 20 years old as an organization and we expect this to be a part of who we are 20 years from today, so. Has Walnut Way installed any solar? Yes, we have. Uh, in partnership over the last three years, uh, we've uh, basically installed somewhere in the neighborhood of about 25 kilowatts on, on four different sites in partnership with a couple different firms and other partner organizations. And so again, as we talk about going into this uh, for the long haul, those were some of our initial steps in this space to, to build our our knowledge and our own capacity as we, you know, move into the space we are now with MREA for real partnership around career pathways, but then also to expose solar and renewable energy to the neighborhoods where we do most of our work. And so our future plans are <clears throat> um, in the short term future, we're in the process now of completing a, a new construction project. And on the roof of this building, we plan to install um, so I think it's 60 panels and battery storage here within the next, probably next within the next two quarters before the second quarter of next year. So we're really excited about that. The building that we're developing is a wellness and workforce resilience hub. And the resilience part of the building is the renewable and sustainable features. And so solar is one of those. We also have some stormwater management incorporated into the project. And of course, all of the fixtures and <clears throat> and other design uh, features uh, lean towards uh, renewable and sustainable approaches to development. So this is exciting for us and we want to be a we want to be a leader in the space and um, ideally build a social enterprise around it. But we got some we have some learning to do yet. <laughs> this is a question here, Nick. What is the update about batteries for solar PV, as this is one of the greatest concerns on solar industry due to high cost of batteries? You were just talking to me about this. Yeah, so the update on batteries. Oh man, that's a great question. So I would say the update is it's, um, it's growing exponentially you know we got the hockey stick curve so it's been batteries have been moving along pretty good for you know some time but it's getting to the point where the cost is coming down enough and there's actually um, positive financial benefits of like grid interaction in some areas that it's um it's making a pretty compelling economic case for it it's pretty um i mean it's still a fair amount of money out of pocket but we're able to realize that um you know, uh, more quickly. 
So battery technology is it's continually improving and it's going to continue on for a while, but I think we finally hit the first like um, little plateau before it goes up again, where like we've hit um, a nice scalable, um, easy lithium ion technology that uh, multiple manufacturers have. And so it, um, so it means that energy storage as um, is lower cost and more energy de dense than it has been at probably any time in its existence. And I mean, we'll continue to see the cost to go down a bit, but um, yeah, we're kind of at the first, we're at that first point where we're seeing a lot of uh, energy storage that's uh, deployable and um, pretty affordable and quite safe. I don't know if that uh, was a little long and rambling, but I hope I got to the core of your question there. Yeah, so um, we want to direct everybody to www.walnutway.org for more information. You can find uh, more information about the program, um, a Q&A or a frequently asked questions section where a lot of questions are answered and then a, a pre-recorded webinar if you'd like to review this content again at walnutway.org. W-A-L-N-U-T-W-A-Y dot org. So again, I'd like to express a, a great appreciation for MREA, Nick, Nick, and the rest of the team. We really appreciate this partnership. We're looking forward to our next informational session as we work towards um, launching and advancing our first class. So I just wanted to hold the space for both of you guys. If you had any last words to share uh, for today's session, but this was great again, nevertheless. Yeah. Thanks um, for I'll, having us. Yeah, most definitely. Thanks a lot much for having us. And we look forward to working together with you all. Um, and then uh, I see there one more question came in. Uh, we thought as solar PV increased its share in the market, price of battery will reduce. And so, yeah, the price of batteries has come down quite a bit. Um, you know, the wide scale adoption of electric vehicles has um, helped that price come down, but there is, um, you know, there's always ways to go, but I think um, we're at a pretty good spot right now. Well, awesome. Well, again, thanks everybody. Thanks MREA team, Walnut Way team, all of our supporters and stakeholders, all of you who joined us today. For more information, reach out to walnutway.org or call us directly. We'll be responsive, attentive, and we'll help you along the way. Looking forward to connecting with everyone. Everybody have a great remainder of the week. Be well, be safe, take care. Awesome. Take care, everyone.